Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to continue discussing the conditional. In the previous video, we learned the rule for telling when a conditional statement is true or false. The rule is that P implies Q is only false when the antecedent, the P part, is true and the consequent, the Q, is false. I like to think of it as it's only false when the promise is made and then broken. In this video, we're going to talk about negations of the conditional. Remember, two statements are equivalent if they have all the same truth values, and two statements are negations of each other if they have opposite truth values. In the previous video, we saw the truth table for the conditional P implies Q. We looked for the row of the truth table. Looking at the truth table on the left, look for the row where the P is true, but the Q is false. That will be the only time that the statement is false and all the rest will be true. Similarly, if we turn around the conditional and say Q implies P, we're looking for anywhere that the Q is true, but the P is false, which actually happens in the, sec in the third row. And all the other statements, all the other scenarios are true. Notice that these statements, P implies Q and Q implies P, are neither equivalent to each other, meaning they don't have the same truth values, nor are they opposites of each other, meaning that one is true when the other is false and vice versa. So what we're going to do right now is try and figure out how can we negate the conditional? How can we get a statement that has, as its last row of truth values, false, true, false, false? Consider this statement, if you do all of your homework, then you'll get bonus points. Under what circumstances is that false? Well, it's false if you do all your homework and yet you don't get bonus points. So the negation of if you do all your homework, then you will get bonus points is you do all your homework and you do not get bonus points. Notice that this negation is actually true whenever the other statement is false and false whenever the other statement is true, which fits the definition of a negation. But it's also not a conditional statement, which is kind of surprising. You would think that the negation of a conditional statement would be another conditional statement, but this is a conjunction, an and statement. To see that it's true that the negation of the conditional P implies Q is actually an and statement, we're going to create truth tables for the statements P and not Q and not P or Q. Let's start with P and not Q. As we've already seen, the truth table for the conditional statement P implies Q has the truth values true, false, true, true in its final column. Let's construct the truth table for P and not Q. First, I'm going to make a column for not Q, which has all the opposite values of Q. False, true, false, true. Now I'm going to use the P column and the not Q column, along with the rule for the AND that says that it's only true when both components are true. And I'm going to look through each scenario, each row, and find where P and not Q are both true, which only happens in the second row. So that's the only time we have a true, and everything else is false. So here we see that P implies Q has the opposite truth values of P and not Q. In other words, they're negations of each other. So then what's the relationship between P implies Q and not P or Q, the other statement that I wanted to analyze? Let's take a look. The negation of P is going to be false, false, true, true. The negation of P or Q, we have to use the rule that an or is only false if both components are false. So we're looking for where the not P and the Q column are both false. And that, and that only happens in the second row where they're both false. Everywhere else, the or statement is true. So in fact, P implies Q and not P or Q have exactly the same truth values. They're equivalent. So we've just seen that the negation of P implies Q is P and not Q, and that the conditional statement P implies Q is actually equivalent to the disjunction not P or Q. This actually makes sense when you think about it. 
because P and not Q, if we negate it, according to De Morgan's law, would turn into not P or Q. In other words, the negation of the negation of the conditional is equivalent to the conditional. Let's put these two facts to work. We already saw the example of the negation of if you do all your homework, then you'll get bonus points. Let's just see that this does in fact fit the pattern. Here are the components where you do all of your homework and you will get bonus points. This is our P, you do all your homework. This is our Q, you will get bonus points. So this is a statement of the form P implies Q, and we know its negation should be P and not Q. Well, P and not Q would be you do all of your homework, P, and, and, you do not get the bonus points, not Q. Let's try to apply this to another sentence. This is a question directly out of our My Math Lab homework. It says, select the negation of the following statement. If the sky looks blue, then it is nighttime. So the component P is the sky looks blue. The component Q is it is nighttime. And this is a conditional statement joined by if then. So we know that its negation is going to be P happens and Q doesn't happen. The promise is made and then broken. So we're looking for the sky looks blue and it's not nighttime. The sky looks blue and it is not nighttime. We can also use the fact that the condition, conditional is equivalent to uh, not P or Q in order to rewrite a statement instead of being an if-then form as an or statement. For example, if you do all your homework, then you will get bonus points. Let's rewrite that as an equivalent statement, something with the same logical meaning, but with an or in it. So here our P is you do all your homework, Q is you will get bonus points. We need not P, which is you don't do all your homework, or Q, you get bonus points. So the equivalent statement that I could say to you is either you don't do all of your homework, or you will get bonus points. Here's an example from my math lab. Write the statement as an equivalent statement that does not use if-then connective and is equivalent to not, and use the fact that P implies Q is equivalent to not P or Q. If she has to wait, then she reads the sports section. So here's our P, she has to wait. Here's our Q, she reads the sports section. They're joined by the if-then connective. We want the equivalent statement, so we need to negate P, she doesn't have to wait, or Q, she reads the sports section. That would be option B. She does not have to wait, or she reads the sports section, not P or Q. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.